Google Glass. We thought it was dead. Uh, Google Glass, you might remember, was the weird, slightly douchey-looking glasses that Google released where you could see the internet in your eye line. It's Google's face computer. Yeah, Google's face computer. <laughs> you look like a nova. Turns out there is a new Google Glass coming probably at the end of this year. And what the search giant has done, Claire, is they've pivoted towards making Google for, for industry purposes, as we understand it. Yeah, they've realised that the whole Google Glass on the street thing might come across as a little bit creepy. Just a tad. Just a Just little a bit. Tad. So now they're pivoting towards industry, which I think is not a bad idea. I'm interested to see where it can go. But I'm also interested to see how the hell is this going to work? So you go into a conference room, does everyone in the room need to have Google Glass? Well, it's interesting because the, the first guy in Australia that I'm aware of that got Google Glass, uh, he runs a um, an industrial safety business and he actually bought it because he was interested in how you could use it for occupational health and safety purposes. So I think from that moment, it was kind of clear that as a consumer product, it was always going to be a little bit niche, but you could see sort of on building sites and architecture and CAD and, you know, all those sorts of environments that you could look at it and go, actually, yeah, also medical uh, applications I could imagine as well. Luke, are there sorts of things that you think that it would work well for that you can already perceive it being interesting for? Notifications uh, in a workplace are sort of this murky, horrible, difficult way of doing things where, you know, if you're on a, an, an Apple ecosystem, your notifications come from your top right. And uh, if you're on a Windows ecosystem, obviously Microsoft's trying to make it a bit better with Windows 10, but not everyone's going to get that straight away. It's murky. It's difficult. Telling someone something in an office without disturbing them is really tough. If you can tell someone really nicely through Google Now cards that they have a meeting coming up or they've got an email or to replace that notebook on their desk is actually a really good, great way of standardizing notifications so that you can say to someone, here's what's coming up. Here's what you're doing today. It's the virtual assistant that nobody has to move for. It's really fantastic. Looks, It makes you look like a pod person, but it's okay. <laughs> Um, the new model uh, is currently being reported to fold up like a traditional pair of glasses and would be more rugged for outdoor use, which I think would be consistent with some of the, the construction elements we were talking about before. Uh, Claire, you know, outside of what we've already discussed, are there other applications you think it could be useful for? I think it could be really useful in surgery. You know, yeah. If you're doing open heart surgery and you've got a bunch Which of Which I do all the time. Don't I want mean, you looking yeah. at your Google Glass. <laughs> well, do you Look want, at my heart. Do you want no, them but, looking around at the machines around you or talking to the people oh, that's in a front good of idea. you? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, totally. You know, TV has taught me that <laughs> surgery is a very noisy experience. There are lots of different machines with lots of different noises and beepings and exactly. giving lots of different status updates as to various bodily functions. What if they took all of those notifications and put it into Google The liver Glass? is trending. <laughs> <laughs> I really want an app that just yells out stat yeah. in three to five seconds. <laughs> no, so yeah, it's, like you, it's like Yo, but for stat. <laughs> oh, God. Oh that, God. I think we've definitely worked out why Google Glass needs to exist. In terms of how Google Glass has been managed by Google up until this point, have Google kind of messed up the messaging in terms of how they pushed it out into the world? I think we actually said this on this very show when Google Glass 2 happened, is that Google Glass is the response to a need, quote unquote, need for wearables before wearables were a thing. Mm. If you have a look at how Google Glass manages your information, it gives you information in cards. It gives you like six minutes to your next meeting, turn left at the next intersection. The learnings from that have been transposed really, really nicely into Android Wear and subsequently into the Apple Watch as well, like in terms of how you're getting notifications and what you're being made aware of. It was the pre-wearable wearable. So now that smartwatches are here and everyone knows how to use cards a little bit better, I think Google Glass has more of a chance now because people know what the goddamn thing is for. <laughs> Yeah? God, we're really not seeing eye to eye today, Luke. I couldn't disagree with you. I will fight you, you IRL. <laughs> Let's take this outside. I've yet to see an area where saturation would occur. Yes, it would be potentially interesting for architecture. Yes, it would be potentially interesting for 3D design and surgery. But again, how many sets are you going to sell? Does everyone in the business need one? Are you going to have one pair per business? Are you going to have three pairs so that you can give one to the client when he comes in? Like, how are these going to interact with each other? I suspect it will always be a niche product. The one interesting thing about Google is Google do commit to a lot of things that end up going nowhere. Even though I do think Google Glass is a bit naff, deeply naff, I do like 
that as a company they are trying things. Uh, the only I, reason I, I bring it up is because I'm sad that we just don't make stuff anymore. Everything has got to have like, go go prove it to the board or go have a commercial use case for it or who's going to be the market for this or who's going to... Who cares? Just make it. And I guess isn't it also one of the rewards of being an incredibly rich company? Yes, like, yeah. if 100%. You, if, if you, you, you put money. yourself in the position to do undirected research, if you, if you have made billions and billions of dollars changing the industry already. Very big thank you to our dueling panellists this week. It's nice to have debate. debate it's great. Uh, Claire Conley and Luke Hopewell, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Meet you in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. Fisticuffs. My name's Mnai <laughs> Fennell and thank you for listening to another episode of Download This Show.